Assalamu alaikum, inshallah you're well guys. So today I'm going to be speaking about a topic which quite recently is always coming up in the workplace and something that impacts us all and that is mental health. And I wanted to speak about this from a graduate and apprenticeship perspective. What are the things at work that can impact your mental health and how can you manage this? The first thing I want to talk about is long hours. Now I'm always getting into discussions with people around what's acceptable, busy season, because all of us who work in finance will have some sort of busy season where we have to work longer hours to get the job done. And no one enjoys working longer hours. But my counter argument is that in any career, business, venture, whatever it is, if you want to be successful, you will have to work long hours. You won't get there by doing a nine to five. Success requires dedication, graft and putting in the hours. And from a career perspective, the people that put in the hours during busy season are the ones that are more likely to be promoted and get to those senior positions. That's just my opinion, guys. I know a lot of people will hate busy season at the big four, top 10 accountancy firms in particular. But I always say to people, well, if it's that bad, you are free to leave. But actually, you'll find many people don't because we receive better benefits we're normally paid better in the accounting and finance industry compared to other industries. Now for new apprentices and graduates navigating busy season can be tougher because you've come from an environment where you're used to a lot of structure. Many apprentices are fresh out of school or college where they'll know what lessons they've got to study during the week when they're going to be finishing college whereas with busy season you don't know when you may be working till 6 p.m one day and when you may be working till 11 p.m or even longer. And this variance in busy season where you're working longer one day compared to the the other is because you're in a service-based industry. You're reliant on the client to provide you the information you need to then go ahead and do your work. And that can have a huge impact on your mental health because it may just feel like you're always working. You don't have time for any other activities outside of work. My first tip is to have a flexible activity which you do regularly throughout the week. So this could be reading, writing, painting, gardening even, walking, gym, running, whatever it is. And all of these activities that I mentioned are flexible because within reason you can do them at any time during the day. So if you had a fixed plan for going to the gym at seven o'clock, if you have have to work late well you could delay going to the gym at eight o'clock but you're still doing an activity outside of work and I think it's very important to do this because then your mind is breaking up activities which are work related and which sit outside of work your mind will know that once you finish work and you've gone for your physical activity or reading or writing whatever it may be you are now switched off from work and you are doing a social activity and it's important that you space these activities out regularly during the week or try and do something every day. Because if you just leave everything till the weekend, you may have worked so many hours during the week that you may be suffering from burnout. So when you actually get to the weekend, you're so tired, you can't be bothered. And then that means that you have a poor start to the following week. The next tip is around work phone and emails. You've got to set boundaries that once you've logged off or switched off from your computer, that's it. You're not going to be coming back online to check emails. In your first couple of years, you're going to be a trainee. You're not going to be a key decision maker or working on critical aspects of work where you need to be regularly checking your emails outside of working hours. And although a work phone sounds like a great benefit to have, trust me when I say this, it's very easy to fall into a habit of where you keep your work phone on you at all times. So you can be out with your friends, you'll have your work phone on you and it's easy to fall in the habit of checking your emails even though you're not expecting anything. Habits like checking your emails when you return home or on your phone regularly throughout the day will make you feel like you're working all the time. In my career today I've worked with loads of people who will switch off their phones whether it's on the weekend, when they're on holiday, if they're on sick leave, they will respect that their me time is for them alone and not for their employer. So there's no harm in doing that. The other thing I want to say about busy season is don't be shy to speak up if you're working ridiculous hours. Now during busy season, 50 hour weeks are quite common, but the minute it starts getting to 70 to 80 hour weeks for a long period of time, or you're getting home at ridiculous time, say after midnight, you should definitely be having a word with your manager. And this won't look bad because you could go to them with a plan saying, look, on these particular days, I have these commitments outside of work, so I can't work longer hours. But on these other days, I could do longer hours to get the job done. As long as the job is done within the deadline, your manager should be fine with it. What you don't want to happen is that you're working ridiculous hours for a long period of time. You think you can handle it. You don't want to speak up. You want to wear it like a badge of honor. And then you collapse. You're exhausted. You need to take time off work because you've burnt out. The next thing I want to talk about 
that is emotional well-being because I think that has a huge impact on apprentices in particular. Now, most of you will be fresh out of school. You'll be joining the workplace for the first time and you won't be seeing your friends from school who you've probably known for several years. I think this is less tough for graduates because as a fresher, you would have already had experiences of building relationships from scratch, but it can still impact you. It can still be tough for graduates as well because again, it could be your first role in the professional workplace. My advice is make sure you're making friends in the workplace. And what tends to happen is that apprentices and graduates will make friends within their intakes, which makes sense because you'll be doing the same exams together. You'll be sharing the same experiences as a junior. But obviously don't just limit yourself to your intakes. Do make friends outside of your intake, maybe within your team, the wider area, people from other service lines. Build relationships, build a network. But at the same time, don't forget your old friends from school. Keeping in touch with friends from school and university will help maintain that barrier in your mind of what is work and what is social life. So when you get a chance, go and visit your friends. If they're at university, take them out for a meal. You'll be working. They won't be be a good friend, maintain that relationship. You don't want it to fizzle out. Unless of course you don't like them, then I'll leave that down to you. Another important thing to remember is to talk. You're going to be experiencing many things for the first time. And yes, your work friends will have an understanding of what you're going through, but they won't be independent. So speaking to your family and friends outside of work will help put things into perspective and they may be able to offer a viewpoint that you haven't considered before. You'll also probably have access to advice lines. So for example, at TJX, we have the Retail Trust. So it's a confidential advice line that we can ring. They're an independent charity and their main objective is to provide advice and guidance to help people lead happier lives. And if you work for a large employer, it's very likely that they will also have a similar partnership in place with an independent advice line. Now, arguably, the biggest impact on your mental health will be the exams. If you don't pass your exams, you won't become a chartered accountant and you may be fired from your role. But I'm not going to focus on exams too much in this video because I already have a playlist on my channel on exams specifically. So check it out. In particular, I'd recommend a video called How to Manage Exam Stress. The final area I want to touch upon is financial well-being, which may sound a bit odd because if you have a job, that's a good thing. You have money coming in. So that can only improve your mental health, right? But actually, in my experience, most of the problems we face are in one way or another related to money. When you're earning for the first time, you may end up not managing that money well or facing pressure from being in a corporate environment where you feel like you have to spend on nice outfits, food, holidays, etc. A scary stat which I came across recently was that on average in the UK, people aged 18 to 24 have around two and a half thousand pounds in savings and people aged 25 to 34 on average have around three and a half thousand pounds in savings, which tells me that on average people are living paycheck to paycheck. At the beginning of your career, that may sound fine because you won't have many financial commitments, right? You may not be married, you may not have kids, you may still be living at home. But as you get older, your financial commitments tend to increase. So you don't want to be in a position where that happens and you have no savings in place. I'm going to share an experience from quite early on in my career. So when I was at the National Audit Office, I went to grab lunch with a colleague once from Pred. I ordered first. I stepped away from the till and I turned back and I looked at him and he was in shock. And he said, Fez, are you not going to get your receipt? And I said, why would I do that? I've only spent five pounds. And he said, for your monthly budget. And I'm looking at him thinking, what budget are you on about? That's a bit crazy. And he actually made me get my receipt. That's how passionate he was about keeping your receipts and a track of your expenses. And then later on in my career, I'm sat with a graduate and he's got this spreadsheet open at his desk. So I'm quite curious. And I just ask him, what have you got open there? It looks quite complicated. And he said, this is my monthly budget. So in this spreadsheet, he's got all these formula working. He's got pivot tables. He's got V lookups and he's tracking all his expenses, everything that he's spending on in the month and then working out what his savings should be. Now, these experiences were years ago, but I remember thinking at the time, crazy people, why are you guys budgeting? Because money comes in and you spend on what you need to spend it on. You're wasting your time. And I'd say it's only recently, a few years ago, where I really appreciated how important budgeting is. And looking back at my career as a trainee, I would like to think that if I had been budgeting and monitoring my expenses, I probably could have saved £10,000 more. And trust me when I say this, if someone gave me an extra £10,000 right now, I wouldn't say no. My advice is make sure you're budgeting from early on, set limits on food, going out, commuting, and be strict with your budget. If you can't afford it or your budget does not allow you to, don't do it. There's no pride in showing off and spending a lot of money in a night. Make sure you're setting an amount aside for savings each month and always have a budget for unknown expenditure. 
because trust me when I say this, every month there's always something that happens which means I'm spending a bit more than what I planned on. Like I said before guys, it's very easy and you could probably afford to be careless when you don't have many commitments, but you don't want that to catch up to you later on when those commitments increase. Finally guys, if there is interest, I would like to post more around inclusion and diversity, especially around mental health and well-being and sharing my own experiences. But for now, I'll leave it there guys. As always, any questions or queries, please feel free to comment below or message me on Instagram.